Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh and hello everyone. In this video we have a hot topic. And what you're thinking? No, not me. It is recurrent. And it is one of the most important topics when it comes to functional programming in general and clean in specific. If it's not the most important one. And moreover, it's, it's extremely complicated when it comes to newcomers starting programming and they are just blown away with this new concept, the concept of recursion. So please pay attention. And without saying much, this is Mojito and please listen. When we hear the word recursion, the first thing that pops in our head is this and this. It feels like a never ending reflection going infinitely deep. So. What you see on the screen are just simple visual examples of the recursion concept. But how is infinite reflection related to programming, you may ask? Let's say we want a function or a piece of code to repeat itself infinitely. And in terms of coding and mathematics, it's quite similar to what's shown on the screen. An infinite loop repeating itself over and over again. But why do we even want that? Let's say we're playing Dota or League of Legends. And suddenly we are killed and waiting for the response to happen. And while we are waiting, we have this moment of deep thought, similar to the ones we have in the bathroom while showering. And we ask ourselves, how do we even interact with the video? And how games are being created? Nonsense, wizardry, or just magnificent art? Well, we owe that to the concept of looping and recursion. So video games rely on keep drawing images again and again and again and again. So quickly that the human eyes see these images as a video. So video games keep drawing images and they do that internally through repeating a large block of code infinitely. Until we rage quit and close the game, of course. It's embarrassing done. watching you miss creeps when there isn't an enemy ah! Oh! F me! That's a f Oh, f me! These cunts! Move it better! F me! Move it better! I just f Thank you, Anonymous, oh, for gifting my underscore button. underscore smells a subscription. Now, again to the topic of recursion. So, in a nutshell, the concept of recursion allows us to repeat a certain block of code, or a function in terms of code and mathematics, infinite amount of times, until we eventually rage quit the function. Now, to demonstrate even further, and because me enjoying bothering and torturing you with a bit of mathematics, let's see an example. Let's say we have a simple function. Let's call it sigma. Because of all the trending sigma videos on YouTube and TikTok, the sigma function will take an input and it will just return one. And now you will ask, what is the repetitive thing about this function? And I activate my trap card, a plus sign and the function itself with a change in its imports are added at the end. <coughs> Back to the topic. So we have this function which at the end just uses itself. So when we try to use it, let's say we use it with two as an input. Now it will just keep going infinitely, adding one and one and one and one. And it keeps going like an endless domino effect. In terms of computing, this is not practical nor useful in any means because basically we will just hang our application if we try to use such a function. So we need to stop it somewhere in the middle of its execution. And we can do that by defining a quitting condition to the sigma function. Let's say we want the function to run until the input aka x reaches zero or otherwise it will just continue the recursion. Well, in terms of mathematics, it's done with this weird notation that you see on the screen. So we just make the function equal to either the upper version when the x is not equal to 0, or it will be equal to the lower version when the x equals 0. Note that the lower version doesn't use the sigma function, it just returns 0. So, let's try to use it again with 2 and see what happens. First, we will go to the upper version and output 1 plus sigma 1. And again, since the input is not yet equal to 0, we go to the upper version and get another 1 plus sigma 0. Finally, the sigma of 0 will just return 0. In total, we are left with 1 plus 1 plus 0, and it doesn't require a math genius to know that 1 plus 1 equals 2. So, simply put, and to rehearse, the process of recursion is when we reach the end of the function, instead of returning something, we restart the function again, we restart the whole process again. And we loop back to the beginning of the function and then the code starts sequential order again and then it reaches the end and we go back to the beginning and it keeps going until we say otherwise and how do we say otherwise we say otherwise by defining some kind of logic thing to break the recursion and that logic thing is called if conditions so let's see how we apply if conditions to begin with, I already created a file called main, and in this file, let's create a function called sigma. 
which represents the same sigma function we saw in the animation. We start by writing the sigma function signature. It will take an integer as an input and will output an integer as well. Since it's quite similar to the example in the animation, it will just take x and return 1 plus sigma x minus 1. Let's try actually to use this function with 2 and see what happens. Well, we get a stack overflow thing in the console. It indicates that the memory of our application is full and we cannot store anything inside it. And it gets filled up because of just computing the result of the endless recursion. So in a nutshell, we need to kill the recursion and we can kill it in the middle of its execution by using the F condition. We can say that if the input, aka x, is not equal to zero, then we want the recursion to continue. And otherwise we want to return zero. Note that the smaller than larger than symbol means not equal in clean. Now let's try to run our application again and it will output the expected result. However, there is also another neat way to do conditioning in clean, a better way actually, and it is by using the pipe symbol. So we add a pipe, then the condition, after that, what piece of code we want to execute, and this condition was true. So if x is not equal to zero, then we run the piece of code, otherwise we just return zero. So let's run our application again to check if everything is okay. To summarize, we have two ways of writing if conditions in clean, either by using the if keyword or the pipe keyword. But you may ask, what is the benefit of using the pipe keyword? Well, it goes down to organization actually. With the pipe symbol, we can write multiple conditions underneath each other. To demonstrate, for example, let's try to use the sigma function with minus two. We will get a stack overflow, meaning that we have an endless recursion. And to kill the recursion, we can add another condition to check if x is smaller than zero. If x is smaller than zero, basically we return something. Now, if you try to run it, it works and we get that something. Now, let's try to put that condition below the second condition and see what happens. We get an error again. The main reason is that clean checks for conditions in an ascending order, starting from the first condition and going toward the last one. And guess what? First condition applies in our case also. So, if any of the conditions is true, then that version of the function is executed. And since now we have considered all the cases, if x is smaller than zero, the first version of our function is executed. If x is not equal to zero, then the second version of the function is executed. If the earlier conditions were not executed, then the default version, which is the last one, is executed by default, which returns zero in our case. Now let's try to do another example, as a form actually. Um, let's try to add all the elements inside the list. So let's create a function and call it list adder. In the signature, it will just take a list of integers as an input and it will return the sum of these integers as an output. To simplify stuff, inside the function, let's create a variable first, which will store the first element of the list. And for the sake of experimenting, let's try to return that variable and check if everything is good. So let's use the list adder with a list containing one, two, three, and four and run our application again and we get the first element as expected. Now, let's create a recursion which will just keep adding the first element and shrinking the list. Remember, we can use the tail function which is defined inside clean. It just returns the rest of the list except the first element. So, in a nutshell, we will get the first element, shrink the list, and repeat the process of recursion all over again. And let's try it out. And we get a weird thing now in the console. Long story short, clean cannot shrink an empty list. Or in other words, you cannot use a tail function on an empty list. Remember, the problem is because we did not break the recursion when the list is empty. So to fix that, we must break the function if the list is empty. So to remedy that problem, let's introduce a new condition in the beginning of the code, which checks if the list is empty. And if it is empty, we want to return zero for instance. Let's try to run the application again, and now it will work fine. And another cool feature of clean is that it lazy loads of variables. So if you did not use a variable in your code, clean will not even bother to load it. So basically, since the list is empty, getting its first element should be problematic. But since we did not execute the code which used the variable, clean wouldn't even bother to create the variable at all. Now, let's make this task even tougher. Let's try to only add the even numbers inside the list. Luckily though, Clean has an is even function already defined. So we can just create a condition which will add the first element only if the first element is even. And now what will happen if we try to run it? An error, of course. Well, that is because what version of the code will get executed if the first element is not even? Nothing. So we must consider that case and define another version. 
just in case none of the earlier conditions were applied. So we just shrink the list and restart the recursion without adding the first element. And let's try it again and it works. We get 6 which is 2 plus 4 and both are even. Congrats, you made it, really happy and I am really proud. In this video we covered what the recursion is and how to implement it in clean. In the next video we will be tackling down another important topic which is less comprehension. Also a great comprehension if we have time of course. And I hope I see you there. Thank you for watching and peace.